kid doesn't understand what sex is or being raped is. They know it hurts. They know it's something. But uh, in my personal case, it was a, it was a game that uh, I got candy at the end, and my dad didn't want me to eat candy, so I didn't tell him. I'm sure he would have. But uh, between the ages of four and seven, mm -hmm. um, there was a male that started off as a babysitter, and, and uh, I didn't really uh, deal with it till 20 years ago when I got sober. And I, you know, you sort of write out your history, your drug alcohol history, your sexual history, and I, I remember saying, uh, well, you know, there's this thing that happened uh, when I was, you know, four or five, six, seven. And I ended up going back to my the street I grew up on and finding some of the kids I grew up with and found out that it happened to a lot of them. And um, um, I ended up um, finding the guy and he moved to Des Moines. He was a big uh, businessman there, a church leader. And uh, I went to his place of employment and confronted him, you know. And, uh, that was something I didn't get to do when I was a kid. Like my dad, even at 50, you know, I, it was hard. It was hard for my dad. Mm -hmm. You know, he thought he'd let me down, but I really didn't know what was going on. I knew, uh, you know, but I will say this, when I saw the guy, um, when I went there, you know, I, and I planned it so that I didn't beat him up or end up in jail, so he hurt me twice. And, uh, but the second I saw him, I hadn't seen him in many years, um, he walked up to me and kind of pushed me on the chest. And as I started my spiel about giving him back the shape of pain, he calls me as a kid. And he tried to do that to me now, I'd break his neck, you know, mm -hmm. the, what was I saying? He jammed his head in my chest and, and it took me back to that room in his house so I could smell it. And, and I was afraid for a minute, you know, because. You know, uh, as I read, realized I was, I'm 6'2", I'm a man now, so mm -hmm. I've done everything I can for the other kids, you know, and because uh, I, I carried a picture of myself when I was four, and uh, I thought, what about the kids in this new neighborhood? So I had my farm heads every five or six nights go put pictures of Kid High, of the, of the man, and uh, his crimes, and his name, and his address, and just to warn the other kids in a six block radius. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. and um, daring them to sue me. I think it's better now where, you know, these, these kids are, you know, they're, they're honest about it. And, uh, it, you know, it's just a hard thing to, you know, there's a lot of shame and there's a lot of threats and these people threaten your parents and your pets and your yourself. But I think even worse, they threaten your, your family. I mean, you know, because uh, I think if this happens to you, a lot of times you lose your sense of self. You know, you don't care, you know, especially your body, you don't, you don't connect to it, it's not yours. And so, but believe me, you can move on and recover and, uh, you know, maybe even help other people. I think that's the best way, just telling your story and making people aware, because it goes on everywhere at every socioeconomic place. It happens in Iowa, every religion, you know, every, every you know, I know Miss America, that it happened to a good friend of mine, and uh, so it's not you know there's no there's no prototype pedophile, but um, you know they're usually trusted, they're usually considered safe, and that's how they get in, and uh, you know that's uh, you know it's very brave for these kids to speak up, and it's wonderful the parents to have a a, a, how, a home where kids could talk about things that happened to them and here in Iowa. Mm -hmm. um, they've changed a lot as far as, uh, uh, you know, uh, children speaking out and, you know, understanding mm -hmm. what's wrong and what's right and being in a safe place. And uh, also the technology here and the, the, the system that they have in place uh, builds a good case. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's something that people probably didn't consider when I was a kid. This place uh, seems a lot more comfortable, more um, family friendly, safe, you know, than what I remember. And so, I mean, it was anywhere, you know, we, my, we didn't discuss it. I mean, it wasn't a possibility that, that that my neighbor would rape me. He was a nice guy. He was a babysitter. And, 
There are ways to deal with it, and I don't recommend everybody go confront their abuser. It's a dangerous thing to do. Um, but, um, you know, you, you, you talk about it, and you, you get the word out, and uh, you, you certainly try to, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's no kid's fault.